It's getting to be that time of year again. For low temperature inspections, let's take a look at some cable options. If you're like me and you do UT at low temperatures, you know you've got to dress warm and inevitably you're going to have to deal with the frozen tangly bits of your UT equipment. Your standard UT cable looks like this. For most of the year, this will do the trick. However, when the temperature drops, you know that sheathing gets stiff, the cable has a bit of a memory, and then things can get messy. When I was at the ASNT show in Nashville, I came across this gray silicone type cable. This one's made by Echo Ultrasonics, and being a Canadian who mixes bag A and bag B with a gallon of washer fluid to make sure the coupling doesn't freeze in the wintertime, I thought a low temperature cable would be right up my alley. Here at home, it's a little bit warmer the last few days, so to make believe winter just a little bit better, we're back downstairs to the Edmonton simulator. We've got two cables and a lot of bagels. Here's the two cables, the regular black one and the new silicone one. If we look at the black one, it does have some memory to it, right? It's all frozen, the sheath is really hard, it's a little bit tangly, but if we take a look at the silicone cable, the silicone cable has no memory at all. So that's it, video's over, right? We showed the unsurprising result that the gray silicone cable was easier to handle at low temperatures than the regular black one. We could end the video here, but there is something else that I want to try. Both of these cables have Limo double zero connectors on them. Typically that's what you use for Toft. I've got a 10 megahertz Toft transducer. Let's plug them into the OmniScan and see if we can see any difference in the A scan response. For control of experiment, the only thing I'm going to change is the cable. We use the same transducer and the same port on the OmniScan. We'll use a steel IIW block and we'll shoot through the one inch thickness. And according to my handy dandy conversion chart, which you know we're going to use again, one inch is three barley corns. The regular cable produces a signal like this. And when we switch to the silicone cable, it looks like that. Basically no difference. That's good news, but it's not terribly surprising. We don't usually expect differences between UT cables unless the cable length gets really long or the frequency gets really high. And by high, I mean over 20 megahertz. There's a really good article on the Evident website about what happens when we use really long cables. Check out the link in the description below. Apart from the difference in the sheathing, you can see on the silicone cable, the microdot connector looks to be a more rugged version. The larger microdot on the single cable is great, but of course, if you have a dual crystal transducer, you want the slightly smaller microdots. Here's a dual cable with BNC to microdot, and you can see those microdots are just the right size, so they will screw on properly to a D790. So, all right, silicone cables, great for cold weather use. The real question though is, will it gent? Uh, let's see here, probably just wrap this around here, pull that tight like this. Black cable, take one. It's Friday, Friday, God. Yeah. That's not gonna work. Or the silicone. So silicone cables are good at low temperatures and they kind of gent. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and thanks for watching.